when uh, Jean Widhoff was around the pool here sketching pictures of us, uh, I, uh, I just got the idea that it would be very nice to get him to bring some of the things that you have seen on NBC News because whenever a film camera cannot get into uh, the courtroom, uh, Jean Widhoff here is hired by NBC to go in and make uh, drawings and sketches so that they will have some kind of visual for the news. And I wanted to show you, first of all, this sketch that he did of me, which I'm very pleased with. And Jean, people in the past who've done sketches of me have told me that I am very difficult to do. Did you find me difficult? Yes, I find you very difficult, and the reason is very clear. You're a very pretty girl, and pretty girls are just hard to make sketches of. And the reason, if you're interested... I am, <laughs> because no one ever really has explained oh. it to me before. Well, the thing is, you, you capture a likeness by the imperfections in the face, let, let's say, the deviations from the ideal. But if you... Uh, when you're doing a quick sketch, uh, those imperfections, if you do catch them, are apt to be rather gross, which, of course, uh, no longer permits the subject to be a pretty girl. If you understate them, then the face becomes awfully bland. The character of the individual is lost. So it's hard to cleave to that, just a refinement that will get uh, the individual character and still retain the prettiness or the beauty. And that's why I found you tough to do. Well, I, it's, uh, what, part of what you're saying is very complimentary. And I guess what I'm deciding now is that I won't spend a lot of money for an oil, oil portrait. Because <laughs> well, let me say this, that given an opportunity to, to take his, his time, the artist uh, should be able to uh, get just the nuances that make you an individual and still do your beauty justice. There's no problem you're very, there. You're very kind. Now, I asked him to bring some of his uh, sketches and paintings today that have been shown on NBC News and to uh, just talk about them a little bit. This particular one, Gene, um, is... Uh, That's Manson. Is the Manson trial. And uh, what uh, particularly were you depicting here about Manson? Well, this was Manson in one of his few very reasonable moods. As you know, he's played a, a kook, he's uh, raged, he's uh, done everything in court. In this particular occasion, uh, he tried to act as his own attorney. Uh, this was refused, as you know, but the arguments that he advanced were very sensible, and his whole manner was very rational, and I think this shows a, a reasonable person listening reflectively to what the judge had to say. Now, when you would look at his face, what are some of the things that you would see that maybe some of the rest of us would not see, Gene? I don't know that I'd see anything uh, different. I think everybody saw much the same thing, and that is a variety of personalities. He, you know, he called himself uh, the man of a thousand faces. Not an original phrase, but he was... He really meant that he presented a great many personalities uh, to the world at large. And... Uh, he presented a number of them in the, in the courtroom. It is a, it's a very uh, protean uh, type of person. It, the, the real Manson, very hard to, you know, to decide on, except for one thing, that he had a very strong personality, and he was very bright. Mm -hmm. Now, let's uh, get another one up here, and uh, let's see if I, yes. What have we here, James? Well, that's Sir Han, who was very proud of his, uh, intelligence and uh, that was uh, questioned a number of times in the courtroom and uh, on each of those occasions he jumped up he was uh, very upset he, uh, he on a couple of occasions it seemed as if he were about to attack either the judge or the witness I think more likely the witness who uh, said that his IQ was not all it should have been in fact uh, I think those of us who were not biased one way or the other, thought that he, his intelligence was considerable. 
Now, when you're doing these, Gene, uh, do you try to stay just uh, very close to what's happening in the courtroom, or do you find that when you're sketching that you just get lost in that and you really kind of tune out what's happening in the courtroom? No, as a matter of fact, I do my very best to, to follow all the testimony and uh, observe what's happening everywhere. It's not always possible, but uh, I think it's obligatory, and, uh, and I certainly try because sometimes uh, right in the midst of what I'm maybe focusing on, say, witness on the stand, there may be a, a disruption in the courtroom. This has happened several times in, in the Manson trial, and uh, that's, that was news, and I, I had to observe it and record it. Uh, members of the Manson family, as they were called, uh, would come in and break in, rise up in the courtroom and denounce the establishment and so on. And uh, I had to be aware of everything, or try to. Do you do the finished thing right there in the courtroom? No, sometimes the sketches I do in the courtroom, if I'm lucky, become the finished thing. Uh, most of the time, I rework them as fast as I can, usually a number per day, you know, and add the color, because it's uh, enough just to try to establish the action and get the personalities down in a rough way on, on the paper. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, show this last That's one here. Down, huh? <laughs> well, this is one of the uh, numerous other trials that I attended uh, during small lulls in the uh, Manson trial. This was particularly interesting because these two men uh, were accused and convicted of having killed a good friend of theirs chopped him up and dissolved the remnants in sulfuric acid. If uh, the police had come just an hour later, as I was told, it would have been a perfect crime. They just found some very few remnants that had not been affected by the sulfuric acid. The, the, the head that seems to have been detached from a body in the box there uh, was the result of uh, one of the these criminals uh, creating quite a disturbance in the court, and so he was put in the dock and bound, and from where I sat, only the head showed, and uh, it seemed like a forecast of what was to come if this, we were using the guillotine. Gene, of course, many times uh, cameramen are, um, uh, well, sort of launched upon, as it were, uh, by people that uh, are they're filming. Have you ever had that experience when you've been sketching where someone has jumped on you for it? No. Uh, I think once or twice there was some mild hostility. Uh, most of the time there's a very great interest and perhaps a sense of pride that they're being drawn, you know, and uh, uh, this was uh, true to a certain extent in the case of Sir Han, he asked for one of my sketches to put in his cell, and uh, I had quite a, a report with Manson. He would nod to me every morning when he came. I was usually there before he was brought into court. I'd wave back. The girls who were on trial with him were very much interested in the sketches. They asked to see them, and uh, this was the one time when they were sit seated directly in front of me as far away as you are. They were reprimanded and subsequently moved away because the defendants are not supposed to talk to the press. But uh, I think uh, the range of reaction is from possible indifference, which is, as I say, rare, to uh, genuine interest. Well, Gene, you have brought us a very interesting feature today, and I thank you so much for taking time to do this interview and show your, your sketches to us. Thank you. My pleasure.